Thanks for stopping by this quick video on the Istio sidecar resource. So I gave a talk recently at a meetup and the talk went long and I didn't get a chance to get to this part. So I want to record it right now so that we can share it with the rest of the community. So my name is Christian. I work for solo.io and I work on open source projects and help our customers be successful with technologies like Envoy Proxy and Service Mesh. At Solo, we're working on helping the community to more easily and quickly adopt those technologies by making the experience uh, simpler. You can check out some of the open source projects that we're working on following the links that we have here on this slide. So Istio 1.1 just released a couple weeks ago and it's being considered enterprise ready Istio. The community has improved things like performance and stability, the ability to distribute certificates a little bit more securely and various other improvements that you can see here on this slide. The performance part of the improvements uh, have been proven out with uh, a set of tests that stand up a thousand different services with a couple of replicas each that are um, then load tested up to 70,000 requests per second. And some of these metrics you can see here on the slide collected. And you can go to istio.io to see more about the, the details of these tests. But the area that I'm interested in for this screencast is the new sidecar resource that's been introduced to Istio. And with the sidecar resource, we can more finely tune exactly what services a workload can talk to. And specifically within a single namespace, how traffic can leave that namespace or how traffic can enter that namespace. A quick anecdote here, uh, Carl from Twitter points out that using this sidecar resource in Istio takes the, the memory cost of the Istio sidecar down, as well as improves the performance of the Istio pilot. So in the sidecar resource, what we're doing is we're paring down or, or more finely tuning what services your Istio sidecar deployed along with your, with your service can see. So if we take a, take a step back, the way Istio has worked up till 1.1 is that all services in the service mesh are available to all proxies, all these sidecar proxies deployed within the service mesh. So if service foo is trying to talk to service bar, it will go through the proxy, but, but the, the uh, uh, service foo's proxy, but that proxy is gonna know about every single other service. So if there's a million other services, let's say, it will know about that in, within that the, it's, it's sidecar. And for these types of configurations, that takes up memory. And the more services you add, so in previous versions of Istio, the, uh, there, was, there was a scaling limit in terms of the number of the services you can have, in, in part because of this, uh, this overhead of cataloging and uh, keeping track of all the services within every single proxy. With the sidecar resource, what we can do is say that for a particular namespace, the services that the workloads in that namespace are allowed to communicate with are a pared down number of services. Um, we can restrict it to those within the namespace. Uh, we, can, we can finally tune which other namespaces that uh, this, the workloads in that namespace can talk with. And we can also restrict the traffic coming in. And by restrict, I mean we're configuring the Envoy proxies to know about these, these services or to not know about other services that it shouldn't know about. So let me give you an, a quick demo of, of what that looks like. So here we're going to, we're gonna spin up our demo. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at, we're, we're, we're doing this with the, with the book info demo. And we see we have book info deployed here. Now we're gonna pop over to, our Grafana dashboards. And we're gonna look specifically at the 
pod metrics, the CPU and memory uh, usages for uh, for these containers, for, for these pods. We're going to look in default, and we're going to look at specifically the Istio proxy. So these Istio proxies are deployed alongside each one of these different instances. We're going to look at the per pod metrics here, and we're going to view the memory usage. We can see right now for all of the Istio proxies running in book info, we can see they're they're uh, using about 20, 28 megabytes of, of memory. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the product page, come back up here, uh, product page pod, and we're going to ask it, what clusters do you know about? What, uh, what other services do you know about in, in the service mesh? And we can see that it knows about uh, some of the Istio um, control plane components and some of the other book info components here. And that's, that's what we would expect. That's all that is, that is deployed in our service mesh at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change that. We're going to add a hundred other services to our service mesh. So I'm running on a, uh, a cluster, Kubernetes cluster that has 20 nodes and we're going to spin up a hundred services, two replicas each. So we should see a, lo a little bit more loaded up service mesh. And then we'll also see what that does to the, to the memory, memory usages here. So we're re refreshing every 30 seconds. Let's change this to the last five minutes and let's refresh every five seconds or so. We can see that as more services are coming into the cluster, they're being auto injected with the Istio auto in uh, sidecar injection that uh, they're being added to the mesh. And we're seeing that slowly every one of these proxies that are deployed in, in the book info are starting to grow in memory usage. And we'll give this a second to complete deploying all 100 of our services. And we watch as the cluster grows, as the service mesh grows, that each one of the service proxies in the book info workloads are being updated with all of these new services. And that, that, that has a, um, a memory penalty. So we'll give this a second. And you can see now we're getting up to uh, 34. So we went from about 28 to 34 megabytes. And we're not, book info is not taking any traffic. Book info is sitting here idle. So you can start to see as we grow the service mesh, we're only at 100 services. But if you get to 500 services or 1,000 services, you can see how the memory penalty for services that are unrelated to, to others uh, you know, we, 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 we do take that penalty. We get up to something like 35, 36, and in some cases 40 megabytes of, of memory to, to handle the, uh, the, this new configuration. So if we watch our pods, see if they're all, if they're coming up. All right. Some of them are, some of them are still coming up. Some of them are, are failing, but that's all right. The, the important part here is uh, is that we have a hundred or over a hundred new services that we've added to um, to our service mesh. The next thing we're going to do is now we're going to go back and look at all of the pro all of the upstreams or all of the clusters that our uh, product page sidecar knows about and we can see that it's added all of these other services that we don't really care about those run somewhere else so what we're going to do is we're going to use the sidecar resource to limit what services the book info um, workloads can talk to and we're going to talk to services that live in our namespace and the services that live in the Istio system namespace, but we're going to ignore anything else. So what this is going to do is 
pare down what the book info Istio proxies know about, what other services it knows about, because it doesn't need to know about all those other ones. So let's create that sidecar resource. And let's, let's give it a second. Sometimes it takes a bit for the um, configurations to propagate. But now we're going to go back and look at these clusters that the product page knows about. We see that all of those extra, extra services that we deployed, the 100 other services, those are not visible here. And that's what we want. This, this particular namespace with book info deployed, we don't care about all those other services, and we don't need to take on that memory penalty for, uh, for, for knowing that. Now, if we come over here to Grafana, we'll let this run for a second, but we'll notice that the, uh, the memory usage is not going down. Um, and this is this is not to be alarming, because although in within the containers the the memory is not being used, it's just not being reclaimed. It's not so in Linux, you know, you, you can use as much of the memory as you want, but processes that um, you know that that give back memory it doesn't actually look like it's given back until someone tries to claim it. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually purge the memory in those um, in those running containers so that we can see what memory is actually using. And we'll give that a second to complete. And then we come back over here to Grafana. We should see that because we use the sidecar resource in Istio to pare down the aperture of services that we know about, we should see the memory usage start to start to drop. And we do that. And so imagine using um, a, a very uh, big cluster, a large service mesh with lots of uh, Istio sidecar proxies, uh, and, and you're able to pare down and more finely tune exactly which services your workloads see. You can imagine getting the types of memory and CPU savings that, uh, that Carl saw in, in, in his cluster. So thanks for stopping by. Um, again, my name is Christian, and reach out anytime if you have any questions, and uh, follow our YouTube or um, Vimeo channels. Thanks.